So when Angular 14 came out, I kind of decided to not cover this topic because I wasn't really sure if things were going to stay the same and then my content would be almost immediately outdated. But with the Angular 15 release date right around the corner and with Angular announcing that standalone components will be graduating from developer preview, I thought this would be a good time to talk about, you know, what are standalone components, what are their benefits and how to use them. So let's get into it. And just quickly, if you guys find this video helpful, please drop a like on this video so it can spread to many other developers on YouTube. All right, guys, we are now at the code. All I've done here is I've created a brand new Angular project. What I've done is I've also imported Angular material. So I just imported a bunch of stuff just so I can show you guys how in standalone components you can import modules or components or whatever. And then I created two folders, one for the old component that I'm going to create and one for the standalone components so that we can quickly just compare the two. And what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to create both components and then we're going to compare the code and kind of see the differences. Let me open the old in the terminal and let me just create a component. Now I'm going to go ahead and create the standalone component. So I'm going to open that in terminal and I want to do ng generate component. And then I'm going to do a uh, standalone is what I'm going to call it. And then you have to put this flag, this flag of dash dash standalone to let angular know that you're going to create a standalone component so you have to have this so you create that specific component if not it's going to go back to the default one now that i've created both components i put the old one right here so i put the old ts file right here and now the new standalone components ts file is right here and i'm going to compare them in a second but i just kind of want to answer some questions you guys might be thinking what's so important about these standalone components what makes them unique what makes them better what makes them different why should i use them and well this is the angular team trying to make their code easier to read and lower the learning curve as they are basically removing ng modules or at least making them optional this allows there to be just less complexity since in standalone components you know all the imports are in the import section and you clearly see that this is a standalone component because it's declared right here versus this one does not have that this component also if you go to the ng module has to be declared in here while you do not see standalone component anywhere here because it lives on its own so let's say you had a bunch of different components and in the old ng module way the ng module gets all these things it's exporting it's importing it's declaring things so in a big big enterprise application there might be a lot of moving parts and if you need to add a new component it might be difficult to make sure do i have everything that i need in this given component while in a standalone component all your imports will be right here let me show you guys how easy it is to just import that materials module this one right here all you literally have to do is go in here, material module. Now we have Angular material in this component. It is that easy. I don't have to go to the ng module. I don't have to declare this standalone component in the ng module. We just kind of jumped that. We avoid it. We can cut this, the need to be going here and getting those issues of, oh, you didn't declare. Oh, you didn't export. It kind of just cuts that out and just makes the project a little bit easier when it comes to these components. Like the name says, they are standalone. It allows you to create components that don't bother the rest of the application since you don't have to include them anywhere. They just live independently. And if you imagine yourself inserting these components into maybe a application that's been up for years that has a lot of moving parts to it, this could be an easy way to inject something that you know is not going to break everything. You know, it's frictionless, as they say. But that is really the biggest difference between the old style of doing it and the new standalone components because you're still going to have an HTML file. You know, you're still going to have your SCSS or your CSS and then everything else is the same. The real big difference is you're basically cutting out the ng module. And I honestly believe Angular is going to keep simplifying their code, keep cutting things out. I don't know if they will ever make ng modules obsolete. But I definitely think this is a step in the right direction to making their application just simpler to work with and lowering that bar of entry uh, for people just to get going in Angular. So now let's actually wire up this standalone component and put it at the root of the application. And let's show us actually showing the HTML of this component. So I went ahead and created a list of heroes and I used an Angular material button. Uh, and I have the HTML already ready to go. So I'm just going to paste that in here. And I just want to show you guys how we can kind of route this to be the default component that we show when we kind of load the page. So once I put in the TypeScript, I'm going to then go and add it to the routing. So now in my TypeScript file, all I have to do is add this list right here so that we have the names of all the superheroes. HTML is good. Now let's go to our routing and add it in there. So now that we're in our routing module, 
to actually route the standalone component as kind of the main on load. Uh, we just add the route to the standalone component. We import it and now we're set. So basically on the default, we're just going to redirect to the standalone component. So now let's actually show our standalone component when we run the application. So we have our application running. And before I show you, I just want to explain kind of what I have here. So basically in our TS file, we just have this list of heroes, very straightforward. And then I just want to show you guys that this angular material module was imported successfully because we have the angular material list right here. And then we have an angular material button. So now if we open this up, we can open here. We can see that we have that primary button and we have our angular material list right here. So as you can see, the standalone component was able to get angular material correctly and show the list and show the button. So now that I've kind of showed you guys how the standalone components work on their own, you guys might be asking, well, how do I use standalone components with my older components, with my older pages in my existing application? Well, now you're actually going to have to import them into your ng module. So in our case, we'd have to go to our ng module and go down here import our standalone component and now we can use this wherever else we need to inside of here and to show you that working i'm going to first comment out in our routes i'm going to comment these out so that we don't default to our standalone component and then i'm going to go into our main app.html and i'm going to go and use our standalone component let's save it and let's run the application and see what happens now with the application live and rerunning again, you guys remember I blocked this out. So now we're not routing on default to the standalone component. It's now here. So do we have access to this? Well, if we open up our browser, we can see that we are again pulling the standalone component. So this is how you can import a standalone component into your older stuff. If you already have components in your old application, that's how you pull it in. And this was kind of the main reason I wanted to make this video is I just wanted to show you guys how much of a step forward I think these standalone components are, how simple they are to create and then use, and I guess how much of a hassle the old way of doing it using the ng modules kind of tends to be sometimes. And I kind of want to point this out because I think it's a good step forward for Angular and going into Angular 15, I think we're going to see them become more and more prominent as the kind of better or preferred way to create components, in my opinion. So now you know how to use standalone components to create a modern front end using Angular, but a client side is only as good as its backend API. And if you want to know how to hook up a .NET API with Angular, watch this video right here.